Now to quote one of our favorite movies, Anchorman, this is a big one because today we're talking about The Dark Knight. That's why we bring dogs! <laughs> so let's talk! <laughs> On July 18, 2008, The Dark Knight was released to the world and is, at this point, probably the most popular Batman movie of all time and is probably the most popular superhero movie of all time. Pretty much changed the landscape of superhero movies as we know it. And with the Batman coming out, what a better time than to revisit The Dark Knight. Yeah, I watched it last night for the first time on my OLED, because um, I just got my OLED about a year ago, and it's been a while since I watched The Dark Knight. And that is a perfect movie for me. That, I mean, I love 89, I love Returns, but I think this might be my favorite Batman movie. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the, uh, the point in my life when I watched that. It was just, it, it's fucking incredible. It, it is such a good movie. I love it so much. The, the OLED looked amazing. It's, mm, love it, love it, love it, love it. No, I mean, for me, this is a very, very important movie to me. I saw this movie <clears throat> when it first came out. I remember that in high school I had a computer graphics class, and me and a couple of my friends in that class, we would watch the trailer every day. Mm -hmm. We were hyping this movie up. We couldn't wait, and we all went and saw it in IMAX mm -hmm. um, opening night when you had to go at midnight to go see movies for opening night. Yep. And then I went home after, and I woke up the next morning, and I saw it again. And then I saw it that afternoon for a third time. I saw this movie three times, technically, in basically a 16-hour period. It's I, incredible. Yeah. And that's a long movie, so that's like most of your time. <laughs> I couldn't get enough. I saw it on its initial run. I saw it in the theaters nine times. Are you serious? Yeah. I wanted, and actually, I wanted to, I was upset because I didn't get the 10, so it had a re-release for its 10th anniversary uh, three, uh, four years ago now. And I went and saw it again to make sure I got the 10. So oh I've seen this movie God. 10 times. And actually, when I saw it for the 10 year anniversary, it didn't look good. I was in a bad theater. Right, yeah, it looks better at home. It now. looked better at home now. <laughs> but at the time, it blew me away. I couldn't believe it. With IMAX and everything, that was one of my first IMAX movies. Wow. It might have been my first See, IMAX See, I saw movie. that in an IMAX theater where it was like a planetarium. Yeah. And I remember sitting up and looking, and it was like round. No, I that saw was... it on one of the ones, the regular ones. That uh, and you're like your local AMC. I think they just got it in ours, and that's gotcha. why I saw it, and it was a big deal. And it, I, I can't believe the hype. And this is one of the movies that made me a cinephile. Like, mm. and like I, I have, I don't know if you guys can see that, a Batman tattoo for the Dark Knight logo. Like that's mm -hmm. uh, this movie meant so much just to me. Just the opening scene. As soon as you get that, like the the gassy, smoky look of in front of the Batman signal, and it just cuts to that giant high up view of the of Chicago, Gotham City, and just the buildings. And even the Blu-ray just looked incredible. And then you see this thing in 4K, and it's just, yeah, it's insane. It's such a step up from Batman Begins in, on a visual standpoint. And least. you get that sting from Hans Zimmer's oh score, that's just iconic now. And then, <laughs> you, and then you get that scene, the Joker standing on the corner holding the mask. That's an homage to Heat. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, is it? That opening. Okay. That's actually that opening 12 minute sequence is the only sequence of the movie that Heath Ledger actually saw. What do you mean? Before he died. He, that was the only, he, he had that, that was the only fully edited part that Heath gotcha. Ledger got to see okay. before his death was wow. the opening IMAX sequence. Shit. It's because they had to edit it to put in theaters, if you remember, they used to show that before movies. Oh my god. So that's all he saw. I didn't know that. Yeah. That was his only part of his performance that he wow. actually got to see. That's such a shame. I he, know. Because his performance, I know you like to say Jack Nicholson, but... <sighs> Come on. All right. Well, let's Come okay. On. Jack Nicholson is my favorite. There's a big difference between what you personally like more and which is better. There is no doubt in my mind that the best performance of the Joker is Heath Ledger. Absolutely. By a lot. And it's not even just a great. Not that Jack Nicholson was a no! bad Joker. Not at all. But it's just. Come on. I mean, Heath Ledger, you don't even know that's Heath Ledger. Yeah. I mean, that's a performance that you can never, ever replicate. When you think of, when I think of Heath Ledger, I just think of a lot of chick flicks. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, like, he was a great actor <laughs> in a lot of different movies before this. Like, I mean, he was great in Brokeback Mountain. He did a lot of great work. But it's like, 
in this movie, it's he's not even freaking the he's not even the joke. He's not even Heath Ledger. He's just the Joker. Mm -hmm. It's like he changed his voice. It's incredible. No fingerprints, no ID. No, and no, like no, you know, no. you've heard it a million times how iconic this performance is, and I'm never gonna sell this short. It's incredible. Like you hear how much I love this movie. That's why when I tell you that it's my third favorite Batman movie, I, I you know it's hard for me to say that. Yeah, I don't know how you can say that because I, I think this might be my number one Batman movie. And I love 89 so much. And I love Batman Forever a lot. I've seen this movie a ton. Yeah, I think this is it for me. I think yeah. Dark Knight might be number number one. I mean, it's probably a lot the of Christopher people. Nolan trilogy altogether is just incredible. Oh, as far as a trilogy, you know. Yeah, it gets a little iffy in Dark Knight Rises, but it is a perfect trilogy as far as... And most... You, it's very rare you get a trilogy that doesn't... That hits on all three movies. Yeah. But as far as the Dark Knight goes, I mean, what is the runtime? About two and a half hours? Yeah. Um, I think they could have cut maybe ten minutes out of that. You know, it gets a little long. Um, the two-face thing at the spoilers, so uh, the two-face thing at the end, I, I think they should have pushed that a little bit further into the movie. Well, started it earlier in the movie, because I feel like two-face did It did really feel shoehorned it. in, and yeah. actually there's a reason for that. Um, originally, two-face was supposed to be the main villain in, in the Dark Knight. Rises. In Rises, but... Um, Christopher Nolan was iffy if he was going to come back for the third one, so everything he wanted to do, he shoved into this movie. Gotcha, yeah, because it was like, Two-Face was only around for like a half hour. Yeah, he's, that, you, know? you know, they really ran through the Harvey Dent whole thing, you yeah. know, from, uh, you know, the White Knight to basically mm -hmm. uh, turning into a supervillain, but instead of ever seeing him again, he dies, mm -hmm. you know, but, yep. I mean, it, it's still a great performance by Aaron Eckhart. Yeah. Yep. So I definitely can't take anything away from that. You I know? agree. But, I mean, it's great performances all around. You know, Christian Bale's back again, Michael Caine is back, both performing at a high, high level. Obviously, Christian Bale takes a back seat to Heath Ledger in this movie. It's really his movie. Yeah. It's, it's a Joker movie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but that's not a bad thing. No. Because that's what you want. It's incredible. It really is. You know, this movie is really about, like, because the Joker isn't a character. Joker's whole thing is he doesn't care about money. Mm -hmm. He is just trying to prove that people are bad. Yeah. That it, and that people can be changed and swayed to the bad side. He just Basically, wants to he's burn the, the world. Yeah. Some people just want to watch the world, but but he is swayed. He's just trying to sway people to the bad side. That's all he's trying to do. He's trying to show. He's basically, as we all know, with Batman the Joker, he's his opposite. So Matt, one of the reasons why I have ranked this lower. I mean, I talked about it a little bit with you before, but as the years have gone on, I really am not a fan of the fairy scene towards the very end. Now, I watched this last night, and I remember you said that to me before I watched it last night, so I, I paid extra attention to that, and I don't really bump into anything on that. I mean, I, mean, I get the what they're going for. They're trying to show that like what the Joker was telling people is wrong, that people are at their core selfish and none of these people were selfish mm -hmm. you know having tiny lister you think he's gonna press that button when he's like i should have done what you should have done 10 minutes ago yeah yeah and you know like you know it's just that it doesn't captivate me like what they're going for i also am like not a big i feel like joker's best scene was before that in the tunnel with their chase scene and uh when they capture when we get to reveal that gary Oldman uh is that a bazooka yeah that yeah. whole thing yeah. i felt like that was like as far as action goes that was a better scene and then it kind of takes a step down towards the end it just felt a little anticlimactic to me and this is after watching it 200 times so you know maybe that's why maybe i burnt myself out well that was the the fairy scene was basically as joker got caught so he got caught and his plan was foiled. Yeah. You know, so I get, I don't know. And it's not even Nolan's know. fault because, like, you know, the Joker, as we know, is supposed to be in more movies and he obviously couldn't. So he was, he just got caught and, you know, that was it. It kind of feels like for a villain like that who's out there killing people, you think you would get more out Could of it. Could you imagine if Heath Ledger was still alive, how different Dark Knight Rises would have been? I, we would, I think we would have got a way better movie. Yeah. You know? I mean, it hurts that that happened, and it, you know, it's one of the saddest stories ever to have mm -hmm. happen. It, it's tragic. But, I mean, at least we got this iconic all-time performance. Yeah, this is definitely the highlight of the Nolan trilogy for me. I 
again, I, it, the highlight of the Batman movies for me. If if you have to watch one Batman movie for the rest of your life, I think this is the one you watch yeah. because it's absolutely incredible. Um, I give it a ten out of ten easily. The I love the iconic shots. I love the scenes. I love the scenery. Um, I, the one thing that bothers is how pointy Batman's nose is on the bat suit. Wow, that's a real nitpick. <laughs> yeah, no, it is so pointy, and I don't remember it being that pointy in Batman Begins. I actually prefer the Batman Begins suit too, and I think you said the and same thing. I like thing. the color. Yeah, but I think that really the reason why they did this with the Dark Knight was more for I think acting purposes because I feel like you know all the actors before they always complained that they couldn't move in the suit. Right. And they made a suit that was more aerodynamic and like easy for them to turn their heads. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really to help they show in the movie so how they, they do back it. out of the driveway better. Yeah, exactly. It just <laughs> it makes more sense, but I think yeah, the suit isn't the greatest if we're gonna Yeah pick, if we're gonna nitpick, it's not like that's gonna be a flaw in the movie. Another little minor flaw is obviously I think I stated about uh, Christian Bale's voice. A little bit like when he's playing Batman. Yeah, he overdoes it. He plays it up. He's hamming it up. But yeah. Hey. No, I, it's, I mean, a it's a comic book. We're movie. picking a little. We're doing nitpicks here. And I then mean. I think my biggest complaint would be the Maggie Gyllenhaal and what's her name? Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. I liked Katie Holmes better. Uh, I just. I really just dislike when. They swap actresses or actors. Yeah, that's the only flaw about it is that they swap because Maggie Gyllenhaal did play this role great. If she would have been in Batman Begins, then I would have yeah. nothing to complain about. But I just don't like when they they switch them around. Mm -hmm. And I preferred Rachel's character in Batman Begins versus The Dark Knight. My understanding is that she was replaced not because of her acting, but because of scheduling. And unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think those things happen. Yeah, unfortunately. And one person we didn't bring up when we were talking about Batman Begins was uh, Lucius Fox, played by Morgan Freeman. Right. And he actually, I think, he has a better performance in this. Than oh, well, he's got a bigger part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he plays a huge part in the ending. I actually love, that's one thing about the ending I love, where he's like, I don't want to do this with all the, uh, what are those, like, sonar cams or whatever. Yeah. And then he's like, if you trust me, type in your name when you're done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that just shows that their relationship is built on trust. And right. he wouldn't betray his trust like that. I thought that was great. Yeah. But yeah, Morgan Freeman's great. I mean, I don't think there's a bad Morgan Freeman movie. No. Ever since Morgan Freeman hit it big in the late 80s, I mean, just narration alone, the guy's iconic. But anyway, um, if I was going to rate this movie out of 10, I'm going to give The Dark Knight, just for its little minor flaws, it's still a great movie. I still love it. It will always be special to me. A 9 out of 10. And I'm sticking to my 10 out of 10. That is fair. Even I completely... with the, the actor swap and the slightly long runtime, in my opinion. I think they could have shaved a couple minutes off of that. Um, but, yeah. yeah, come on. The Joker, so good. It, so, so good. No, it is great. No, I definitely can't recommend it enough. So, as far as physical media goes with this, um, we have ve we have a lot of versions of this. But I want to say The Dark Knight was my first Blu-ray ever. I, I believe this was the first Blu-ray I ever purchased. And again, I am a sucker for slipcovers. <laughs> and I... The, see, look, the slipcover is even different than the one that's on the... The oh, artwork wow. of the case. Yeah, actually, so that's that. yeah. That's the Bat Cycle. Yeah, <laughs> and then you see Batman and Joker there, and right? the classic. Uh, what but now you look at that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's, it's got. It's like the Joker wrote on it, like yeah, he does in those videos. Like an Arkham Asylum. Yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think that's awesome the way they did that. Yeah. And this is so you got the Dark Knight Blu-ray special features. Remember when digital copies came on a disc? How does that work? Yeah, I know. Because computers used to have disc drives. If you can <laughs> believe that. That's wild. <laughs> What's a disc drive? Um, hey, look, there's a digital copy in here. It expired in... Don't know, but it's probably expired. <laughs> hey, here. Good luck. Oh, well, you need the disc, I guess, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, this was my first Blu-ray ever. And... Again, just the, sh the way this... This was an incredible Blu-ray. Like, you could still watch this Blu-ray today, and 
you could see that the purple string because everyone talks about that on yeah, the back. That of the was what they were oh. selling us on. You got to remember, just go back in time when DVDs were still the hottest thing, mm -hmm. and they got Blu-ray technology. The Dark Knight was the reference thing. That's what you need. Everyone, I remember watching videos and people say, you could see the string going from the guys, yeah. from William Freakin's mouth to the Joker's, uh, he's got it right on the, in there. The smoke grenade and, 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 yeah. and it's on his And it's like, you could notice it. He closes it. it in the bus. That's how high the resolution was. And I remember looking for that, like we were just super excited. That was a huge deal. Yeah, and then they, uh, and then just those old IMAX shots of the above Chicago, just those big rolling, just the buildings and the the, yeah. the high altitude shots. That was a big deal too. I don't know at the time. I know they only had I think four of those IMAX cameras in the world, and okay. like that's how hard it was to shoot with those. I mean, I'm sure they got plenty more now. And then John, what do you got there? And then yes, yeah, so before the 4K copies, I actually had this awesome Dark Knight trilogy Blu-ray copy. And this is one of those hard. Yeah, it's a hard hard cardboard one. ones. Yeah, Which they really nice. do. And then they actually, this came with a book about the trilogy. A really well done book, too. I mean, like, you know, it's got that, like, glossy finish to it. And then it flips open to the Blu-rays. They like, you know, you get that iconic shot that you've seen a million times. You That's know, a very nice set. It really is. It's a very... That's nicer than the 4K set. It, it's much nicer. There's only one thing in the 4K set I like more, and that is that they're individually packaged. And uh, they're on 4K. And they're on 4K. <laughs> but as far as the box, I, if they could always put trilogies in boxes like oh this... Oh, my God. They yes. last, too. There's no breakdown in yep. them. Like, ugh. I and can't then, go on enough about that. Now we come to the best experience, maybe not the best set, the best looking set at least, but as far as what you're gonna get as far as audio and video, the 4Ks, you're not gonna beat that. Um, so you guys probably remember this from the Batman Begins video, but uh, now we're gonna talk The Dark Knight. And again, you got it in that set with the nice big old slip cover, all individually packaged like John said, and then you got your Blu-ray special features and your 4K disc. Nothing crazy, but as far as visuals and audio go, big step up from Batman Begins in my opinion. So as far as audio goes, um, this has got the 5.1, the Dolby 5.1. Uh, it sounds great. I think they did a better edit in the audio with this than they did in the Batman Begins uh, visually. Oh, stunning. Oh, oh my absolutely God. stunning. Yeah. It's reference quality for sure. Definitely if you jump from the reference quality Blu-ray to the reference quality 4K, it's, it's, it's you know. It's, uh, I, I'm still speechless because it, it's just so beautiful. Those shots, again, it just seeing the city, the dark scenes are just, ugh. You need to watch this yeah. in a 4K And when they player. expand for the IMAX, oh my god. The fact that it's so crisp and clean. It was, oh my it's god. It's gorgeous. It, it really is. is. Like, uh, I can't, I, I, you know, we're drooling over it and there's a reason. Yeah. And, they, they, and I'm not here, we're not here, we're not sponsored by them to sell you this blue 4K all. at all. I wish. Yeah. It would be nice. Reach out. Um, so it's just great. It's an amazing 4K. The movie is amazing. Uh, what would you give this 4K? Because I really do think it's one of the better ones. That we've um, gotten. just because I really wish it had an Atmos track. Uh, one it, day. It does still sound fantastic. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 because it looks amazing. Um, I just really wish the audio was an Atmos, but the audio track is still incredible. It's a great 5.1. No, there's still love in there. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm going to piggyback off that and give it a 9.5. Yeah, also. same thing. I would like to see an Atmos track on it, but I don't think it's hurting it. Yeah. It's... But again, like I told you guys in the Batman Begins video, this set is generally on sale at Best Buy. Um, if you guys want to try to check out on Best Buy, use code Let's Talk for a 0% discount. Mm -hmm. um, Happens. It works every time. This is definitely the set to have if you're a fan of the Nolan yeah. trilogy. And if you're a collector and just fans of 4K, you gotta grab it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thanks for t uh, joining us today on another edition of Let's Talk. Join us for our last edition from The Dark Knight Rises coming soon. And look out for our review of The Batman. We're going on Tuesday. March 1st, we're going to see. Yes, yeah, so look for our review on March 2nd, more than likely, mm -hmm. if we see this before it. Yep. And anyway, thanks for joining us. If you want to see more from us, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends. Mm -hmm.